Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So if you are new to this channel, hi, I'm Rebecca and if you are already subscribed, welcome back. In this video, I'll be showing to you guys how is it really like in the first year of medical school and how I managed to survive it. Actually, I want to call it tips but I wouldn't call it tips because that might be a tip for me but not for you. Everyone is different and the tips might not work for you. So it's more of like my experience in the first year of medical school. If you're thinking of going to the medical pass or you already enrolled yourself into a medical school, I hope that this video will be useful to you guys. Anyways, just for your information, I'm studying in Malaysia. So whatever I share to you guys might not be the same as your school's career. And even if you're studying in Malaysia, each university has different planning for their students So just wanted to let you guys know that So I will be starting off with what I learned in my first year of medical school And then I'll be moving on to our clinical sessions, our hospital visits, clinic visits And some tips on how I survive medical school So in semester 1, we were learning basic sciences Which is more like an upgraded version of what we have already learned in pre-medical school In Malaysia our pre-medical school is either A-levels or foundation in science It's very similar, it's just that some details are added on Nothing too overwhelming but some people might find it confusing because we don't learn it by system We study anatomy, physiology, pathology, biochemistry, pharmacology all individually So it's like all of the systems get mixed up but after you get a hang of it, you'll be perfectly fine. So in the first semester, if you already have a good foundation, you won't find trouble. It's just that you just have to manage your time well and just consistently study. Okay, so moving on to semester 2, we are already detailed studying each system. So for my university, we started out with 3 systems in 1 semester. Crazy, right? We studied cardiovascular, respiratory, and also hematology. All these systems are just amazing. It's very, very fun to learn. But definitely, you have to put effort in it because there's so much new things. It's a little bit overwhelming, but once you're already into the system for like two to three weeks, you kind of get the hang of it. So you wouldn't find it that overwhelming until you're preparing for the examination. So for each system, we learn anatomy, physiology, pathology, pharmacology, and also some of the microbiology. However, whatever we learn is not on the surface anymore, it's very detailed. So you will definitely have to refer to books in your semester two. For semester one, uh, most of my friends don't use books. But I personally do when I don't know something, like I'm just finding an answer to my question. But in semester 2, most of the time, I use books. For my university in semester 2, for each system, we had 4 weeks. So after that 4 weeks, we will have an examination which has carry bring forward mark to our board exams. We really had to do well because it contributed about 5%. So basically, that's it for what do we study. So now is the fun part which is the clinic visits and also the hospital visits. So for my second semester, we were already going to hospital, already going to clinics. For our first semester, we didn't get to do that because we're only learning the basics. For our cardiovascular system, we went to the hospital if I'm not mistaken. For our respiratory system, we went to our government clinics to do some history taking and just to observe some of the procedures. For our hematology system, we went to the blood bank instead of hospital. So basically, when you're at the blood bank center, they will explain to you the procedure of donating the blood and like how the blood gets centrifuged and stored and stuff like that. Moving on to our clinical skills session. In semester one, which was during our basic sciences, we are already taught to do history taking. So basically, history taking is you finding out more about the patient, about how the illnesses started, their symptoms. So basically, we learn the very basic, but the doctors wouldn't score you if you don't know anything because you're just learning the basics, like the foundation on how to take a good history. And we also learn how to do TPR. TPR is taking temperature, blood pressure, and also respiratory rate. So for our second semester, for each system, we learn how to take a very detailed history from the patients. This is just to teach us how to set our mind so that in our mind while we are asking questions, we can already narrow it down to certain diagnosis. Let's say the patient comes in with high blood pressure and then you have to ask very very specific questions like 
whether he have any dizziness, nausea, vomiting and whether his family members have any heart issues or also high blood pressure, something like that. We will also learn how to do physical examination like for cardiovascular, we learn how to examine the anterior wall of the chest and also specific region like how do you mark the heart for like ECGs and stuff like that. And then for respiratory system, we learn how to examine the lungs. For hematology system, which is one of my favorite system for a clinical session is because we learned how to draw blood from patients. I got to do it on a real patient at the clinic that I went to during my clinic visit, which is really, really fun. So basically that kind of sums up all of the things that we do in our first year of medical school. Moving on to the next part in this video, I'll be sharing to you guys how I managed to stay alive and how I managed to stay sane in my first year of medical school. So basically number one is plan your studies. It's very very important to plan your studies this because there are so much new things that you are gonna learn there's so much things that you have to know in a short period of time if you don't plan your studies you won't be able to study everything for your examination normally what i like to do at the beginning of each new systems is that i would normally count how many lectures are there and i will also count how many days i have left to the exam on top of that i will also make sure to read my lecture notes at the end of the day on the same day that the lectures had been carried out there are times that i have no time because there are too many lectures so let's say there are three lectures per day and i can't finish at all three i'll make sure to do one or two number two is to have commitment to your studies when you're studying there are a lot of things that you want to do. I see my friends hanging out, I will want to go and hang out with them. I see my sisters going out to shop, I will want to go out to shop with them. There are just so many things that can affect your studying pattern. So be committed to your studies and also to the way that you're studying. I'm not saying that you have to be anti-social by just staying at home. No, that's not what I meant at all. What I mean is that let's say I have to finish two lectures today. I have to finish that two lectures today. Unless I finish that lectures, I am not going out. Number three is have breaks. I can't tell you how important it is to just have break for yourself because medical school is a long run thing so you don't want to burn out in the first year itself you know what I mean so I'll make a point to spend some time with my friends by going out to cafes and also do some shopping with my sisters so make sure to take breaks because if you don't take breaks you will burn out by getting bored of what you're doing this is because you're basically like a robot if you don't take any breaks you're basically sleeping you wake up from sleep you go and study you go to class you eat and then you sleep again and then you repeat the whole same thing for five years you get bored and basically you feel like there's no purpose you know and number four is my most important thing in medical school which is don't compare yourself to others it's very important for us not to compare ourselves to others because each of us have our own capabilities, specialities and also our own learning curve. So some of us may pick up things faster, some of us might pick up things slower. So it's really not good to compare yourself with others. In medical school, there will be tons of smart people, tons of geniuses and tons of kiasu people. If you don't know, kiasu is a Malaysian term for people who is always trying to get the first place or trying to get the best. Yeah, so basically we call that kiasu people. You are seeing people like, why are they so smart and why am I not knowing the things that they know? So it's normal to feel that way but just don't let it overwhelm you, don't let it take over you. And just have your own mindset and your own goals because I always believe that everyone will get to the end goal. It's just how committed are they towards their end goal. It doesn't matter if you reach your end goal slower because if you do it steadily, you'll reach it anyways. And in medical school, don't ever feel that you are competent with others because if you're thinking that way it's really torturing your mind and also making you feel bad as a person don't compete with people compete with yourselves because what's the point of competing with people in medical school there are so many students like for my class there are 200 students so it's really kind of impossible for you to compete with everybody a lot of pressure will be on you I really don't see the point of competing with people because this is no longer like school. I understand that sometimes you will feel shitty if 
you don't know something and other people knows there's really no point to get jealous there's really no point to compete you know so if you know that you're lacking in that area just go back and then just go and read and chill that's what i learned don't compare yourself to others and also don't let people compare you to them Alright, so we have come to the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching my videos and congratulations if you stay until this point of the video. To those who are going to the medical fields, congratulations and good luck. I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!